every three minutes, someone, somewhere in the UK, will have a heart attack. Every eight minutes, someone in the UK will die from a heart attack. Every year, 150,000 people die from heart-related conditions in this country alone. That includes 73,000 who die from coronary heart disease, 40,000 who die from a stroke, and 42,000 who die prematurely from cardiovascular disease. There's no doubt about it, heart disease is one of Britain's top killers. But what if there was a way to predict if you were going to have a heart attack? What if there was some sort of early warning system? What if you could tell whether you were at risk, not months, but years before it actually happened? And if you could tell, what if anything would you do about it? Scientists have been trying to improve their predictions of cardiovascular events for years. Many people will present with symptoms such as shortness of breath, angina and palpitations before seeing their GP. But now there's emergent evidence of another symptom which may appear even earlier than these well-known complaints. The catch is, it only applies to men. So what is this warning system that has the potential to predict heart disease at an early stage? Well, believe it or not, it's your erection. Westmoreland Street is located in the heart of London, in the historically affluent neighbourhood of Marleybone. Bond Street is only 10 minutes away and Harley Street is just around the corner. This is number 16 to 18 and for the past few years it's housed the urology department for University College London hospitals. This is where you come to when you have urological conditions such as renal tract stones, urinary incontinence, prostate cancer, erectile dysfunction and many others. The interesting thing about this building is that it used to be a national treatment centre for heart conditions, otherwise known as the Heart Hospital. For decades, cardiology and urology have often been regarded by the public as being unconnected. However, just as Westmoreland Street represents a historic link between these two fields of medicine, so there's been a growing scientific link between cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction. So what's the link between erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease? In order to answer that, we first need to establish what exactly erectile dysfunction is and what causes it. I spoke to Professor David Ralph, a leading expert in male urological conditions, to find out more. The definition of erectile dysfunction is the inability to get a satisfactory erection uh, sufficient for sexual penetration. The mechanism of an erection is just simply an increase in blood into the penis and it makes, therefore makes the penis erect. To get a normal erection, the blood vessel has to dilate to allow more blood to come into the penis. If that doesn't happen, then there's not enough blood in the penis and the penis doesn't get sufficiently erect. The patients that have normal function but they have the anxiety, that's more of a psychological cause. As you get the westernized diseases of high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, blood vessel disease, these are all diseases of the blood vessel which prevent an adequate amount of blood to get into the penis.
we took to the streets with a short quiz to ask members of the public if they were aware of the link between erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular problems. From a list of 13 conditions, we asked them to choose five that they would associate with heart disease. So we were looking at which five medical conditions are risk factors for a heart attack. Yeah. Which ones are you confident with? Uh, I was confident with four, and yeah. one of them I guessed. <laughs> How confident are you? These are things that I would think are not good for you that could be the cause of heart attack. Your first answer was high blood pressure. How confident are you? Quite confident. <laughs> correct, that is correct. Yes. <laughs> high blood pressure. That's yeah. correct. Okay. Which one are you confident on? Which one? High cholesterol. Correct. High cholesterol. High cholesterol. Yeah, same. I'd go for that. Obesity, how confident are you? Uh, definitely, yeah. Obesity? Yeah, quite confident on that. And obesity? That's correct. Good. Diabetes? That's correct. Okay. Diabetes, how confident are you on that? Uh, fairly confident. I yeah. I guessed heartburn, which I still don't think is right. It's just because it had heart in the title, so I just went for it. <laughs> right, okay. <Yeah. laughs> so you got four out of five. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That's very good, very okay. good. You scored four out of five, which is excellent. Oh, great. So what's the missing answer? Um, the actual answer is erectile dysfunction. Oh, no way. Wow. Erectile dysfunction is related to having a heart attack. Oh, really? Learn something new every day, <laughs> didn't you? Erectile dysfunction. Oh, okay. Would never have thought of that. Erectile dysfunction. Oh, is he? Okay, okay. <laughs> to heart attack. No when, when, way. Literally. That would have been probably, yeah, probably last on that list, I would have said. Yeah. So were you expecting erectile dysfunction to be related to having a heart attack? No, of course, I think they say that usually, like, the, the way to man's heart is through, you know, from, you know, from that. I thought you meant like when a guy finds out he's got it, oh I've got it, and he has a heart attack like that. But no. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. I wouldn't have had a clue. That's amazing. Rather than just going to get medication, they actually should get a checkup. Yes, 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 yeah. for sure. And I can imagine they don't know, and even if they did, they'd they probably would... still be hesitant. Yeah, for no, sure. But it's, but it's... See, the other far, the reason why I was so confident on them is because, like, people talk about it. Yeah. Erectile dysfunction is never mentioned, so that's really interesting. Well, you learn something new every day. <laughs> Like any other organ in the human body, the penis relies on a good blood supply to keep it functioning properly. We can see in this section how blood travels to the penis through the penile artery. This then divides into the dorsal artery, the cavernosal artery and the bulbourethral artery. If we take a section across the penis, we can see how these arteries feed blood into two cylindrical chambers, collectively known as the corpus cavernosa. These chambers contain scores of smaller arteries, which fill with blood, resulting in the penis becoming firm and rigid. Throughout this process, the volume of blood in an erect penis increases to more than six times the amount of its flaccid state. That's the difference between this beaker and this beaker. Unfortunately, when these two chambers fail to sufficiently fill up, the pressure generated may not be high enough for the penis to attain or maintain a rigid state. This is one of the commonest causes of erectile dysfunction. So we know that an erection won't occur if there's not enough blood flow to the penis. The question is, under what circumstances would this happen? Well, there are a number of reasons why a man may experience reduced blood flow down there. Sometimes it may be due to the medication they're on or surgery that they've had in the past. However, one of the commonest causes of reduced blood flow to the penis is in fact cardiovascular disease. To understand the link between cardiovascular conditions and a lack of blood flow, we need to take a closer look at a very important process. It's called atherosclerosis and it can take place in every single artery in the body, whether you're male or female. I spoke to Dr Rob Bell to find out more. It's essentially 
cholesterol deposition inside the walls of arteries and that can lead to a narrowing of the arterial lumen. It's typically a result of limited blood flow down that artery. It's a bit like uh, squeezing a hose pipe, you know, it's, it will restrict how much blood can get down beyond that narrowing. And it will manifest itself in a number of different ways. Heart attacks or angina when you walk too fast or too, too aggressively, pains in the leg when you walk, which are relieved typically with rest, and you can also get strokes. But interestingly, atherosclerosis can manifest itself in other ways too. Erectile dysfunction can be one of the earlier manifestations of atherosclerosis. So imagine this tube is one of the main arteries which supplies your heart muscle. In a healthy artery, the inside walls are relatively smooth, which means blood can flow freely without obstruction or restriction. However, during a person's lifetime, the arteries gradually lose their elasticity and there's a buildup of cholesterol deposition. Factors such as smoking, diabetes and high blood pressure can increase this process. And the smaller the hole, the less blood that's able to get through it. So what happens when the arteries are so blocked up that no blood is able to get through at all? Well, that's the moment you suffer a heart attack. How men with erectile dysfunction are essentially being given a warning sign that a heart attack may be on the way. An increasing body of evidence shows that ED may be able to predict the development of cardiovascular disease independent of age or other traditional risk factors. So the question is, what should you do if you're having problems with your erections? Well the first thing to do is talk to your GP. A thorough assessment could offer you a vital window of opportunity to prevent further problems and lower your risk of a future heart attack. The truth is, every single man who develops erectile dysfunction should be considered a cardiac patient until proven otherwise. Men don't go to GPs and so they may go if they're having difficulty with their erection. That is the time to have a full medical. Check you've not got high blood pressure. Check you're not diabetic. Give the advice about stop smoking and exercise and diet, etc. There is an underlying pathology or underlying causes which can be stopped early because at the end of the day, these patients are at risk of heart attacks, strokes. If they present with erectile dysfunction, that might be a warning sign for them that actually something can be prevented, not necessarily their erectile, because they may have erectile dysfunction, but heart attacks and strokes could be prevented. If you don't have problems with your erections, how can you reduce the chances of developing them in the future? Well, there are a number of changes you can make to your lifestyle. And crucially, if it's good for your cardiovascular system, then it's good for your penis. One of the most important lifestyle factors that can help your erectile function is physical activity. In fact, some studies have shown that being inactive can double your chances of developing ED in later life. Be sure to maintain a healthy weight through diet and regular exercise. Obesity increases the risk of high blood pressure and plaque buildup in your arteries. This can lead to a reduction in blood flow to the penis. Studies show that erectile dysfunction is more likely to develop in men who smoke. Tobacco contains a number of different chemicals which damage the arteries that supply the penis. Eat a healthy and balanced diet. 
Be smart about your cholesterol intake. And if you have diabetes, keep an eye on your blood sugar. Poor control in both these areas can damage the arteries over time and increase the rate of atherosclerosis throughout the body. Every year, I see dozens of men in my clinic with erectile dysfunction. Most of these men have no idea of the relationship between erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular problems. In the past, there have been many awareness campaigns which highlight the links between minor symptoms and more serious health conditions. Chest pain that feels like angina may signify an impending heart attack. Weakness down one side of your body may be associated with a future stroke. ED, on the other hand, has had very few public initiatives which focus on the wider associations with heart disease, leaving most men in the dark about their potential risk. Let's be honest, when it comes to erectile dysfunction, the last thing any man wants to do is speak to someone else about it. But the problem is, ED isn't just a matter of male pride, and its implications reach far beyond our ideas of sexual prowess or performance in the bedroom. Men complaining of ED should undergo detailed assessment and receive intensive treatment for risk factors. If you're experiencing erectile dysfunction, or you're worried about the strength of your erections, talking to your GP could be the first step to saving you from a future heart attack.